right, we'll take questions for Avalanche for JT Comfer. Start with Peter Baugh, the athletic. Hey, JT. Um, you've kind of had a year where you've moved around a lot of different lines. You've Your production maybe hasn't necessarily been where you've wanted it to be scoring-wise. What did it mean to you to kind of get at, up to this point the biggest goal of the season? Uh, yeah, I mean, as you started talking about my season, obviously um, it's been a little up and down and I have played throughout the lineup, but I feel like the last month or so, um, you know, I'm feeling like I'm playing my hockey again and skating and, and going to the net. And, um, you know, it was a great play by Timmy at the line and, and knew he to get it to the net. Um, but yeah, it felt good to, to get that one tonight. Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. JT, you touched on him right there, but Alex Newhook making that pass. Could you just talk about his game? And, and you know, I know you weren't, you haven't been playing with him these last few games, but just what you've seen from him and how good a player he has shown to be already. Yeah, well, I did play with him for a couple of games in uh, his first few. And, I mean, he's a good skater. He's a he's smart hockey player. He's got skill. Um, you know, it's, it's not an easy time of the year to jump in. That was a big hockey game. That was an uh, intense hockey game um, against a good team. And, um, you know, he was able to make plays and help us out tonight. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Yeah, JT, I don't think we've uh, seen you guys get outshot 37 to 21, if, if at all, all season. Your thoughts about, you know, just sticking with it, even though they controlled play at times, you, you guys came out with the win. It was gutsy, it seemed like. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're not going to outshoot teams every game and, Obviously, we want to. That's the goal is to um, play our style of hockey. Um, you know, the first two periods for our standards, not good enough. Even the third, um, probably not up to our standard. But as you said, we were able to sweep one out, and that's what it's going to take in playoffs. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be, you know, we outshoot them 40-20 every night and we get a, a W. It's going to be, um, you know, different types of games, and we're able to battle that one out tonight. All right. Thank you, JT. Thank you. There's the next game. We'll take questions for Avalanche goaltender Philip Grubauer. Thanks, Peter Bott, The Athletic. Hey, Philip, what was, um, I guess, that last minute of play like for you? And how big is this for you, confidence wise, going into the playoffs to have a standout performance like this? Um, yeah, personally, it was uh, nice to get that game and get those two points for sure. Um, from a team perspective, I don't think it was uh, one of our best games. I think we dialed it up a notch in the, in the last period made the right choices, played, played the right way. But I think the first uh, two were uh, some some periods to forget for sure. Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Philip, you guys don't often get outshot the way that you did, but um, you guys kind of, you know, came up when you needed getting the one goal in the second, getting outshot 15 to four, and then coming up big in the third. I guess, number one, what does it say about the resiliency of this team? And number two, uh, just about your game and, and sticking up, standing up for the team today. Yeah, I said it out there. I think uh, we can't expect to win every game um, four or five, five, one, you know, in the playoffs. You're going to run into some tough opponents. Um, not every, every game is probably going to be a tight one. Every detail matters. And, um, we feel pretty comfortable in those in those tight games, and we have to. And we got to make the right decisions. And tonight was uh, a greasy one um, to finish that road trip. It's been a long month for us, so it's it's nice to see um, to get those points for sure. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Hey, Gruby, the win obviously in regulation gives you guys still a, a shot at the the division title and the President's Trophy. Just just. Thoughts about those two goals, please. Yep. I think uh, next game is going to be the most important one. Um, obviously, great job tonight, but um, it's it doesn't matter if we don't win the next one. So um, LA, they have nothing to lose. Um, we gotta we gotta find a way to to play our game again and uh, get ready for the next two, and then uh, we'll see who we're gonna play. All right. Thank you, Philip. We'll take questions for Avalanche head coach, Jared Bednar, Lauren Jabara, Altitude Sports. Hey, Jared, uh, what an ending to that one. Vegas, you know, strong checking all game and, and good sticks. Just how, how do you think you guys were able to pull this one out? Simple goaltending. That was it. That's how, I mean, without him, we don't have any chance in this one. In, in my opinion, I think uh, Vegas was more competitive 
um, won the bulk of the puck battles, played with more pace, better execution. Their commitment to check was strong. And um, I didn't think we executed what we wanted to do in that game at all. Um, we make a couple plays, uh, Burakovsky from Newhook to get us on the board. And then, you know, we, we threw a couple pucks to the net and, and had one go in. But simple answer, goaltending. That's the only part of the game that I like tonight. And you know what? I'll give our penalty kill credit. They, they sacrificed and blocked some shots. They got into scoring areas in our penalty kill. Um, I thought were real committed and, and wasn't perfect, but they blocked some shots to keep them off our net to give ourselves a chance. And uh, Gruby did the rest of the work. When you look at what Andre Burakovsky was able to do in that, you know, the first period, it seemed like he was he was really getting things going there in that second line until you kind of started shifting things up in the third. Just what did you think about them until then? You know, that line with Kadri Newhook and, and Burakovsky. Yeah, they were all right. Um, I thought Berkey was really skating and was one guy that at least wanted the puck and, and, and wanted to transport the puck on his own. He wasn't always just looking to pass it in the coverage. Um, a little bit of determination to his game. His checking was fine. Uh, when he's skating like that, he's such a dangerous player. So to me, he was he was driving that line. And um, so I moved him with Mac and, and Nico in the third a little bit, and he did the same thing there. So I, I thought he's been he's been real good um, coming out of the COVID break. And now that's probably, I don't know, 10, 12 games after that, probably by now. And He's been pretty good in all of them. He's been making the difference um, on the positive side of things for that whole time. And we've been moving him around a little bit in the lineup, uh, playing with different guys, and, and he's helped spark every line he's been on. Adrian Dater, Colorado Hockey Now. Yeah, Jared, I couldn't help but notice the players just sort of look like, boy, you know, we got away with one tonight. Uh, nobody was really jumping around out there. Uh, but yet, you know, you win the game. So, um, is it going to be important for you not to, uh, you know, um, as a team, uh, you know, no, uh, sort of brush this aside and uh, realize that there's still some serious work to do here or, or not? Do you just say, look, this is one of those nights their goalie bailed us out and uh, that's the way it goes. That happens sometimes. Uh, well, number one, I think your goalie's part of your team. Uh, we haven't had to lean on our goalies um, heavily a lot this season. Um, I generally feel we've been winning games because our play has been good. We certainly need a save or two a night. Um, that's part of it, but I don't like relying on our goaltender like we had to tonight. It's not a winning recipe, obviously. Um, on the flip side of that, I don't think you can just brush it under the rug because the, what bothered me about tonight's game is it, it looked like um, we wanted it to be easier than what it was going to be. And um, when you get down to the final 16 teams in this league and you look at those teams, I mean, you can go division by division. And with, with, with ours, with, with Vegas, us, St. Louis, and many, I mean, you're going to have to work for your wins. I, I don't see uh, a team there that can't, that, that doesn't have the ability to come out of the division. So it's going to be hard. And you got to be prepared for it to be hard. I think you got to be prepared to have to fight through tight checking. Um, you can't be stubborn with the puck. You got to be able to, you know, check the same way on the other side of the puck, and you got to find a way to create. And we did none of that tonight, and so that was concerning to me. It's not. It's not something that that I'm going to blow out of proportion. But I think there's a lesson to be learned from that game, and, and we weren't ready to. Um, compete the way that they were tonight and, and we're going to have to be you know starting against LA on uh, uh, Wednesday. Take two more here for Jared. Peter Ba, The Athletic. Hey Jared, um, how's Nathan I guess doing physically right now and was he maybe more limited than he normally would be coming off that lower body injury with what he could do on the ice speed wise and physicality wise? Well uh, I haven't talked to him after the game but I mean, Nathan and, and Matt, our, our training staff, made a decision that he was good to go. So um, I would say that he, I, I don't know how much he was limited. He wanted to play, felt like he could play. 
uh, the way he normally does. And um, so he was in the lineup. You know, we wouldn't have played him tonight if if it was bugging him uh, real bad. Um, but sometimes it's hard to get Nate to open up about that. So there's a chance that he was hampered a little bit. But I think you're in the lineup. You have to uh, you have to be prepared to play um, the right way and 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 be able to provide enough to our team to help us win. Um, you know, I give him credit for playing. He's had a couple of days off and, and, and trying to get his body right. And um, hopefully he's good to go for uh, Wednesday against LA. And last one here, Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Jared, I have a two-parter for you. Number one, uh, obviously going into that third period or sometime in the second, you split up that Kadri burakovsky newhook line. What was the thought process, not only with pulling Bur- Burakovsky up to the top line, but pulling Newhook down to the Joe's Comfort line, which ended up paying off and, you know, with that second goal. And the second part of my question is uh, you guys out hit them 49, 45. I just wanted your thoughts on playing a physical game like that against a team like Vegas, who's known for playing that kind of a game. Well, I think we out hit them 49, 45 because they had to puck the whole night. So we probably had three times as much play without the puck. So we had to try and check it back. Um, I didn't think that we played more physical them, not at all. I thought they were the more physical team tonight from the start, uh, more engaged uh, in the physical part of the game. Uh, I, I would say I, I flipped those guys. I've already touched on why I moved Berkey up. I thought he was re- willing to transport the puck and he was skating real well. It seemed like he had his head up and moving and, and making some smart plays to help get us from the D zone to the offensive zone. He was willing to skate within the offensive zone. I really like Val skating and the way he checked too. Um, so I put Kadri with Landis Gog and Val. Uh, Newhook was playing well. I thought Comper was skating pretty well. So I elevated him from the fourth line to the third line, just trying to get a spark because we didn't have anything going for 40 minutes. All right, thank you, Jared. All right, thank you.